Hello everyone, my name is Chidi Kunife. I'm a public health nurse from University of New England and my presentation is on maternal mortality and race in the United States. Problem statement. Maternal mortality raises a global concern in recognition of the unacceptably high level of preventable maternal death occurring annually. In 2017, the World Health Organization estimated that globally, 810 deaths occur daily and 295,000 deaths annually from preventable causes during pregnancy and after childbirth. Health disparity is linked to maternal mortality as it creates a wide gap due to poor socioeconomic status, poor education, and inequity in health service delivery. The health issue for this presentation is hypertension in pregnancy, which is one of the leading causes of maternal mortality in black pregnant women living in the United States. The disease accounts for about 7.4% of 800 pregnancy-related deaths. Yearly, it's estimated that high blood pressure occurs in one in every 12 to 17 pregnancies. Diagnosis is made when the systolic blood pressure is greater than 140 mm mercury and the diastolic pressure is greater than 90 mm mercury at two different readings. The risk factors associated with hypertension include age, family history, race like the black, unhealthy diet, obesity, excessive alcohol consumption, and smoking. Description of the issue. To gain a better understanding of the contributors to maternal mortality due to hypertension, I'll be using the socio-ecological model to describe the factors that help or hinder the disease at different levels. At the individual level, poor health literacy hinders the knowledge of contributing factors, blood pressure measurements, medication compliance, and also prenatal and postnatal management of the affected mother. For what help? Pregnant women with high socioeconomic status receive for better health insurance coverage, which allows access to quality medical care and prenatal care. They will also choose healthy food options such as fresh food, fruits, and vegetables. At the interpersonal level, lack of social support from family members like a spouse and other significant family members can hinder the patient's compliance with taking hypertensive drugs and diet. Good social networks allow the patient to have effective communication and more access to information that promotes clinical outcomes. For instance, the American Heart Association allows the patient to join a free support network and have free online discussions. At the organizational level, some organizations fail to obtain health insurance coverage for their employees and this will hinder the likelihood of receiving adequate treatment. On the other hand, the Workplace Wellness Program will offer health promotion activities such as Biggest Loser Contest for Weight Loss, which will promote blood pressure reading. At the community level, poor access to unhealthy food allows the intake of saturated fat, high carbohydrates, and high fat diet, which will worsen the clinical outcome of hypertension in pregnancy. Conversely, the availability of community resources such as exercise pathway in the residential areas will promote physical activity and help to achieve lower BMI and blood pressure. Lastly, at the policy level, poor funding of maternal and child health services will lead to scarce medical resources that hinder care during pregnancy. Notably, health policies which support free medical care for pregnant women will help to improve their health and prevent complications. The proposed intervention. To manage hypertension in pregnant women, we will be using evidence based community intervention studies which have been successful in the past. First is the community based intervention in hypertensive session, a comparison of three health education strategies. This will adopt three health education programs such as self learning reading, monthly regular didactic lecture, and monthly interactive education workshops. The resources needed to implement this are community health workers, primary health center, blood pressure measuring kits, flyers and educational materials and personal medical charts. Second is the intervention is outcome. The second intervention is outcome and cost of implementing a community-based intervention for hypertension in an urban slum in Kenya. The intervention component is awareness raising, improved access to screening, standardized clinical management of hypertension, and long-term retention in care. The resources needed include clinical and non-clinical staff, hypertensive medication, and blood pressure measuring device and financial resources. 
Finally, effect of the community health worker-led multi-component intervention on blood pressure control in low-income patients in Argentina will adopt strategies like home intervention such as health coaching, home blood pressure monitoring, and BP audits and feedback. It will also look at a physician intervention and a text messaging intervention. The resource is needed as standard questionnaire, blood pressure monitoring machine, coffee, tea, or auto BP cough, medication scale, blood pressure medication, finance, and community medical personnel. Significantly, the three evidence-based interventions help to lower the blood pressure reading and can be used by pregnant women to achieve a good clinical outcome. Proposed intervention, we also look at the logic model. So in the input, we see maternal patients and all the family members will be part of this intervention. And the activity that we do is to check uh, the weight, height, and blood pressure reading. And then we're going to screen patients in the output, the number of patients who accept, who we refer for elevated blood pressure. And then on the outcome, we have 95% of patients assess the clinic for screening, and then 90% reported raised blood pressure. On the impact, at the end of this intervention, we have blood pressure reading of less than 140 millimeters of mercury and 90 with, uh, millimeters of mercury on the diastolic without any cardiovascular intervention uh, uh, complication and, and that was achieved with, with the rest of this uh, model. So on the proposed evaluation, the evaluation process will be on monthly regular didactic lecture for pregnant women which will focus on the knowledge of risk factors, treatment, management and complications of hypertension. The learning opportunity will teach pregnant women how to effectively check their blood pressure and record it using the signal manometer to determine normal or abnormal values and also self-report it. The second evaluation process will adopt a standardized clinical approach to monitoring medication compliance, blood pressure reading, the number of visits to the clinic for blood pressure reading, and follow-up care at recommended intervals, which could be monthly or more. Lastly, the evaluation process will emphasize home blood pressure monitoring with a signal manometer using a standard protocol and the use of personalized blood for recording blood pressure readings. It will determine the effectiveness of individual live SMS texting messaging or lifestyle modifications and reminders on medication compliance. The lower blood pressure reading will determine the long-term outcome of successful intervention methods adopted. Challenges and barriers and way forward. One of the identified barriers in implementing the intervention is language. Achieving an effective didactic lecture requires effective communication, which may be challenging in a multicultural setting, and also among women with different educational backgrounds. The way forward is employing community medical personnel to offer health education in culturally acceptable language. Limited finance, which will hinder the availability of self blood pressure kits and access to the primary health care center. The way forward is to provide free blood pressure measure kits through medical sponsored program. Insufficient time is another factor. A pregnant mother should be referred to the community health workers to consistently offer lifestyle modifications for patients at home. Number four is poor access to primary health care clinics. will limit consultation and follow-up services by pregnant mothers. The way forward is to encourage home visitation by the community medical person. To successfully manage hypertension in pregnancy, collaborative efforts of all the relevant stakeholders must be employed at all levels of the social ecological model to achieve success and ensure a healthy clinical outcome. Interventions should be culturally accepted and tell out to meet the health needs of the target audience. I have my references. Thank you.